Hello everyone and welcome back to the Maker's Workbench. I'm Charles and in this video we're going to take an in-depth look at Edson's Soldapult ZD500DX, a premium self-contained hot tip desoldering station that's made right here in the USA. And let me tell you, this thing really sucks, so you might want to stick around. It's been a while since I posted a review, and I have to admit this one's long overdue, but I'm excited to finally get it out on the channel. You might remember a company named Edson from a previous review I did on their Loner 971E soldering station. Check out the card here to that video if you haven't watched it yet. That soldering station impressed me quite a bit, and when Edson offered to send me their Solderpult ZD500DX desoldering station to review, I happily agreed. In full disclosure before we begin, Edson sent me this desoldering station free of charge for the purpose of evaluation and review. I've placed links in the description of this video to Edson's website where you can purchase a ZD500DX for yourself. This link is not an affiliate link and as such, the Maker's Workbench does not receive any commission from the sale of products found at that link. Now with that out of the way, let's move on. Edson says that the Soldapult ZD500DX is a fully self-contained hot tip vacuum desoldering station that has been designed for heavy duty applications where maximum heat transfer is required. The ZD500DX is the perfect heavy duty desoldering solution for the professional engineer, repair technician, or serious hobbyist who needs an all day workhorse that won't let them down when they need it the most. The Soldapult ZD500DX retails for about $727 US at the time of this video's publication and includes the desoldering station base and HT500-2 hand tool with ZD13 tip included. Additionally, a soldering sponge holder and a cellulose-based soldering sponge are included as well. An accessory kit is also available that includes everything you need to clean and maintain the ZD500DX. This kit includes a Wigapry calibration tool, double-ended wrench, tip retaining collar socket wrench, anti-seize compound, high temperature o-ring grease, two sizes of tip cleaning pins, a replacement mica sheet to line the solder collection well in the hand tool, and an assortment of replacement air filters. My ZD500DX came with an accessory kit, but you can also purchase this kit separately for just over $100 at edson.com. And just like all of Edson's products, you can purchase every replacement part you might need in the event your ZD500DX breaks down out of warranty or wears out after years of use. Edson has told me that they believe in repairability and the right for you to repair your equipment. In fact, Edson includes a complete parts list and parts diagram in the back of the ZD500DX user manual. Right to repair has always been a huge thing for me and I love supporting companies that support my right to repair. The ZD500DX features a powerful 70 watt high output PTC heating element that makes heavy multi-layer boards easy to desolder and when you see it in action later in this video you'll see just how quickly it heats up the solder joints even on heavy ground plane connected joints. The HT500-2 hand tool is adjustable, ergonomic, and appears to be designed to provide comfortable working angles at almost any orientation despite which hand it's being held in. The head of the hand tool is capable of being rotated 90 degrees to the left or right or completely around to 180 degrees so that the vacuum trigger can be operated by the thumb. Additionally, the angle of the head can also be adjusted slightly by loosening this screw. And just like on the Loner 971E, Edson has made calibrating the ZD500DX quick and easy using the included Wigapry calibration tool to make adjustments via the conveniently located externally accessible calibration pots. The ZD500DX features a dual set of filters in the suction path which helps to ensure that any fumes or smoke from the desoldering process are captured and filtered before being exhausted into the air. This is also a good time to point out that all of the hoses on the desoldering station are made of a high temperature silicone that are quite flexible and help make the hand tool feel less restricted in the hand. Okay, now that all the specs and talking points have been covered, let's take a look at the Solderpult ZD500DX desoldering station in action. But before we get into that footage, I want to thank one of our channel's sponsors, Starbond. Starbond has sponsored the Maker's Workbench going on three years now, and I use their products for everything from gluing 3D printed parts together to filling holes in woodworking projects and even as a finish on many of my wood turning projects. I literally use it for everything, and it's rare that a day goes by that I don't use Starbond for something. 
Starbond is the freshest CA glue on the market, with new batches being shipped from Japan weekly. This isn't the cheap CA glue you find in the big box stores that dries out before you can use it. This is a premium CA glue that has been formulated for superior bond, excellent curing times, and great shelf stability. In fact, Starbond guarantees 30 months of shelf life for their standard clear CA glues when kept under the recommended temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Starbond CA glues are available in white, brown, black, and clear, and with more than two dozen formulations of varying viscosities, Starbond has the right CA glue for any project you can think of. Visit Starbond today by clicking on the link in the description below and use code TMWB15 at checkout to receive 15% off your entire order. In doing so, the Maker's Workbench will receive a small commission from Starbond, and as an added bonus, they will continue to support our projects in the future. I use Starbond, and I would not recommend it if their CA glues were not everything they advertised it to be. That's code TMWB15 at checkout to receive 15% off on your entire order at starbond.com. I've also included some Amazon affiliate links in the description below if in case you would like to purchase your Starbond from Amazon. Okay, now with the bills paid, let's move on to some actual desoldering action. For this demonstration, I'm harvesting an IC from an old Lexmark electronic wheel rider, which was the successor to the old mechanical style typewriters, and I believe the precursor to the ballpoint pen style electronic typewriters. And for you typewriter aficionados out there, the wheel riders I were given were water damaged and bound for the scrapyard, so nothing of value was deconstructed in the making of this video. I have the ZD500DX set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 185 degrees Celsius for all of my international viewers. And as you can see, it's making quick work of removing the leaded solder joints from around this DIP60 IC. As the ZD500DX is self-contained and provides its own vacuum pump, it does make some noise when in use, but honestly the sound levels are comparable to a large aquarium pump, and it sounds much louder in the video than it does in real life. Also, as I utilize a fume extractor that makes noise as well, the sound from the desoldering station just sort of blends in, and I don't even notice it after a few minutes have passed. This desoldering station is really making quick work of these joints, and you can see how clean the holes are when I remove the iron. You'll notice that I wiggle the desoldering head around a little bit. This helps move the pin around so that all of the solder can be sucked into the hand tool. This isn't always necessary, but I find that when working on heavier joints and ICs, wiggling the head ensures that the pin is moved off the hole's edges, preventing any sticky joints when it comes time to remove the IC. You'll notice that I'm using a longer tip than what comes from the factory with the ZD500DX. This is because the distance between my microscope's lens and the PCB is very short and I needed the longer tip to kind of reach around the lens and work on the PCB while recording. In fairness to the product, I'd like to point out that this process seems like it's taking a lot of time here on video, but that's because I'm having to work around a lot of obstructions in my way, such as the microscope lens, a couple different cameras, and everything else. So this process is actually a lot faster when nothing's in your way. You might notice that sometimes a little solder blob is left and I have to revisit a hole a second time. This is, again, because of the obstacles I'm having to work around to film this shot. I rarely get those little blobs when using the desoldering station without any obstructions in the way. Note that Edson does recommend that you angle the desoldering tip slightly to allow a little airflow between the tip and the solder joint. That little bit of airflow aids in the solder being sucked away. I find the best technique for me is to hold the iron flat on the surface, then apply the vacuum, and then add a little angle to the tip before rotating back to flat while wiggling the tip around. This seems to help ensure a very clean job on every hole. Here you can see how I push on the pins that I think may be stuck with the desoldering iron's tip. If they do not move instantly, I know I need to give them a little more attention maybe to get some more of the solder out. Here's a wider view while I desolder the next row of pins, and I'm just going to speed through most of these so you don't have to suffer through the entire 30 pin desoldering process.
Now that we're done, we can flip over the board and see how easily the IC is removed after the desoldering process. You can see that these large pin count ICs pop right out and are ready to be put back into use in repairing a broken wheel rider or to recycle or repurpose into something completely new. And if we flip the board back over, you can see just how clean the solder pads are after the desoldering process. I want to wrap up the desoldering portion of this video by showing you how well the ZD500DX performs when attempting to desolder a lead-free alloy, so let's give it a try with the scrap Rojas compliant PCB that I had laying around in a bin. I'm using Edson's FL22 Flux Gel because for whatever reason, the lead-free alloy that was used on this board is quite nasty and during a previous attempt, the solder would turn into a slag-like material and clog up the nozzle. Using flux seems to help prevent this. And as you can see, a little flux makes a world of difference. And these joints cleaned up nicely. And now for the part of the review you've all been waiting for. The torture test! Just a quick note before we begin this test, I do not recommend you do this with your ZD500DX as it could damage the hand tool. So to test just how much solder the desoldering station can handle, I balled up about two feet of Kester 6040 solder and used the hand tool to melt and suck up the solder as fast as it could. As you can see, the ZD500DX handled the test well and while some bits of the solder flung off to the side, it was able to suck up the ball in just a few seconds. I really like watching it suck up the individual strands of solder as if they were tiny worms crawling into a hole. And for the grand finale, I'm going to put the ZD500DX through the worst case scenario and force it to suck up this entire blob of solder in one trigger pull. But first, it has to melt the solder. Okay, here we go. Don't blink because you're going to miss it. Wow, that was pretty quick. I've performed this test several times and I still can't believe how fast it made the blob disappear. If that's not a great indication of how much suction power this desoldering station has, I don't know what is. So, what do I think about the Edson Soldapult ZD500DX self-contained hot tip desoldering station? Well, I've used it for a few months now and have desoldered several hundred parts from various leaded and lead-free boards and it has performed exceptionally well the entire time. It handles small through-hole joints quickly and easily and the same is true for heavy connections and boards with heavy ground planes or multi-layers. I've found that adding some leaded solder to nasty corroded joints helps freshen up the joint some and allows the solder to be sucked away easier. This method also helps stubborn lead free joints to clean up as well. It's a little pricey for the average electronics hobbyist, but it's a lifetime tool that is user repairable. If you're like me and you like purchasing a tool or a piece of equipment once, this is the desoldering station for you. For small to large repair businesses, the ZD500DX is an all day workhorse that will perform well in a high-paced and demanding environment. I did a test removing small SMD components such as resistors and capacitors and as you would expect it makes the components disappear quickly and while it works I still prefer to remove microscopic SMD components with hot air. Speaking of which, you might want to stay tuned for an upcoming review from me on Edson's Loner 971HAE, a lab air supplied hot air rework station that I'm super excited to have in the lab. So what are my final thoughts on the ZD500DX? It definitely feels like a lifetime piece of equipment and with Edson stocking replacement parts, it will be easy to repair in the event that it ever breaks down. It comes up to operating temperature quickly and is ready to get to work within 30 to 45 seconds of flipping the power switch. And with an air filter in the suction path and one on the exhaust air side, there are less nasty fumes floating around in my lab. The adjustable handle position is a great feature as well and allows you to choose which position is best for you or the job you're performing. It's also easy to maintain and clean. And finally, it's made right here in the USA. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this review by giving Edson Soldapult ZD500DX my full endorsement and recommendation. It's a serious bit of kit, and I cannot thank Edson enough for sending one over for me to review and being able to keep it and add it as a permanent piece of equipment in my electronics lab. I have another video coming out next Friday, so be sure to check back for that. Before this video ends, I just want to ask that you give this video a thumbs up if you found this tutorial helpful in any way and that you consider subscribing to the channel as well as ringing the notification bell so that you get notified when I post new content or start a live stream. Only 8% of you who watch this video are subscribed and even less are receiving notifications when I post new content. 
I'm really pushing hard to grow this channel in 2021, and I'm doing this full time, at least for the time being. So knowing that you enjoy the content really helps motivate me to create new videos. And that's going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my content, and as always, hack the world and make awesome.